Hi everybody, my name is Cliff Anderson and I'm a librarian at Vanderbilt University. Welcome back to this introductory series on Nets Blocks. Today we're going to tackle one of the hardest problems in computer science, FizzBuzz. Just kidding, it's actually not that difficult. FizzBuzz is a children's game that requires you to evaluate and respond to changing conditions. Back in 2007, the developer and venture capitalist Imran Ghori wrote a blog post arguing that FizzBuzz makes a good interview question for computer programmers because so many find it difficult to solve. In this video, we're going to solve FizzBuzz in NetsBlocks using conditional logic. That is, the logic of if-then-else expressions. By the end of the video, you're going to be branching like a pro. Let's start by discussing the rules for FizzBuzz. The game goes like this. We start counting up from 1. If the number is divisible by 3, then we say fizz rather than the number. If the number is divisible by 5, then we say buzz rather than the number. If the number is divisible by both 3 and 5, then we say fizzbuzz rather than the number. If none of those conditions apply, then we just say the number itself. Got it? Let's practice with Alonzo. So, one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, eleven, fizz, thirteen, fourteen, fizz, buzz. If you paid close attention to the way I explained the instructions, then you heard several conditionals. Conditionals take the form of if such and such is the case, then do something else. For instance, if 6 is divisible without remainder by 3, then say the word fizz. How do we express that kind of a conditional statement in code? Well, the first part asks a true or false question. Is 6 divisible by 3 without remainder? So, from our last video, we know that asking true-false questions requires the use of Booleans. To convert this question into Boolean logic, we need to find the right math operators to formulate the equation. Is the remainder of 6 divided by 3 equal to 0? The easiest way to pose this question is to use the modulus, or mod operator. So I'm going to bring the mod operator over here from operations. Okay, and let's take 6 here, and 3. Oops, I keep clicking on it, it says not a number. But there we go, 6 mod 3. The answer should be 0 because 6 divided by 3 is 2 with a remainder of 0. However, if we divide it by 4, then 6 mod 4 will produce 2 because you can divide 6 by 4 once with 2 as a remainder. Now that we understand how the mod operator works, let's create a Boolean expression to capture the truth or falsity of our particular condition. We need to plug this operator into an equation that returns true if the modulus of our operation is 0 and false if the modulus of our operation is any other number. So how do we do that? We're going to bring over a Boolean operator and we're going to take this particular expression and put it on the left side and the right side we're going to put 0. And now we can ask, is 6 mod 4 equal to 0? Well we know that it isn't because it produces a 2 on the left side and 2 is not equal to 0. So, indeed, it's false. But if we change this to a 3, 6 mod 3 evaluates to 0, and 0 is equal to 0, so it's going to return true. Okay, we've set up our Boolean expression to use in our conditional tests. Now we just need to formulate those tests themselves. NetsBlocks offers a couple different blocks to evaluate conditional expressions. Today we're going to use both the if block and the if else block. But let's start with the if block and come back to if else when we discover our need for it. So the if block is here under control. Let's go over here and let's go down to if. There it is. So I can grab this if block and I can take this expression and I can put it into this slot here. So now we've formulated a Boolean test. If this test is true, then whatever's inside of this C shaped slot will execute. And if it's false, then it won't. So let's create if blocks 
to test for our three conditions. That is 3, 5, and divisible by 3 and 5 together. Okay, so we've got divisible by 3 right here. So let's just duplicate that. And we're going to make this one, is it divisible by 5? In the third case, what we need to test for is whether the number is divisible by both 3 and 5. That is to say, it needs to pass both those tests. And because we have to test two things, we need an AND block, as we learned last time. As you remember, when we use an AND block, we test to see if both the left side and the right side evaluate to true. If both evaluate to true, then the AND block evaluates to true. If one side or the other or both are false, then the AND block evaluates to false. So let's duplicate these two tests. I'm going to duplicate this one here and move it onto one side. And I'm going to duplicate this test right here. And I'm going to move it to the other side. And so now we've got a test for is it divisible by 3 and divisible by 5. The thing is, we need a variable again, because we want to test not just specific numbers, but every number in our sequence. Do you remember how we created a variable when we were making splatter art? Let's go ahead again and create a public variable and plug it into each of these Boolean expressions in our conditionals. So again, to create a variable, we'll go over to the variable palette. We're going to click on create a variable. And now let's call it, we can call it anything we want, but let's just call it something that makes sense. We're going to call it count. So I'll click OK. And there is a variable count. And instead of the number 6, we're just going to put it in its place. So we're going to say, is 6 mod 3 equal to 0? Is, sorry, we're going to say, is count mod 3 equal to 0? Or is count mod 5 equal to 0? And in this last case, is count mod 3 and count mod 5, are they both equal to 0? The other thing that we need to do is to assign that variable some initial value. So let's go ahead and do that as well. I'm going to take this set block out and we'll say set, and we drop down to count, and let's just make it initially set to 1. So we can test it now by looking at this particular Boolean expression. We know that 1 mod 3 does not equal 0, and that 1 mod 5 does not equal 0. So we then know that the left and the right inputs to this operator are both false, and therefore the operator as a whole is also false. So let's take a condition and put that in here for the if, and drop it in there. Okay, so we've got our three conditions set up, but what should happen if one of the expressions in these particular conditionals evaluates to true? Well, that's up to us, of course. We can put any code we like, but why don't we have Alonzo say fizz buzz or fizz buzz as appropriate? Do you remember how we put words into Alonzo's mouth? Let's go back and find that block again under the looks palette. So the say block is here under looks, and let's just grab this right here. So we'll say say for two seconds, and then say for two seconds, and say for two seconds here. But we don't want Alonzo just to say hello. We need to fill this in with the content that we want. So if the number is divisible by three, Alonzo should say fizz. If the number is divisible by 5, then Alonzo should say buzz. And if the number is divisible by both 3 and divisible by 5 without remainder, then Alonzo should say fizz buzz. Shall we test this out? Let's take this number and we'll set it to 3. In that case, 3 mod 3 does equal 0, so Alonzo should say fizz. And there you go. But that number is not divisible by 5, so in this case, when we click on it, Alonzo shouldn't say anything. And there you go. Well, let's put everything together now. We just have to pull over a repeat block onto the scripting area and put these conditions inside. The repeat block will allow us to control how many numbers we want to evaluate in our sequence. But we also have to make sure that we increment our variable as we move along so that the numbers that Alonzo reports are the right ones. Fortunately, there's also a block for that. Over here, under variables, you can see 
that there is a block, let's take a look at it right here, called change by one. So that will increment our count variable every time we go through. Now we're gonna create the loop by going over to control and grabbing this repeat. And so let's put these things together. So we're running out of space here, but that's okay. We'll get things sorted out. So let's put the three condition up here, and then we'll put the five condition underneath it, and then let's put the condition here that we want. Oh, we're gonna change the variable here by one every time we go through a loop. And we wanna change this loop to 15, and we wanna start with the number one. Now, the one other thing that we need is, this is only gonna say fizz buzz, fizz buzz. We need to actually have something for Alonzo to say, let's see here, when none of those conditions apply. So in this case, we're just gonna have Alonzo say our number. I'll bring that over here. And there we go. Ready to try it out? Okay, let's give it a shot. So I'll click here. One, two, fizz, three. Wait, wait, Alonzo shouldn't say three. Four, buzz, that's right. Five, wait, that should have been masked by buzz. So something's not working. What went wrong? The if box all responded as we expected to the inputs. So we got fizz, buzz, fizz, buzz in our numbers. The problem is that Alonzo said more than we wanted. As it happens, our logic requires our branches to be exclusive, not just if then, but if then, or if not, then something else. To capture this kind of logic in a conditional, we need an if then else block. The if then else block is like an if block, but it makes explicit what to do in the cases when the Boolean expression it contains evaluates to false. So let's reorder our sequence of blocks using if then else control blocks. And we'll see if we can get the logic right this time. So let's create a little bit more space for ourselves here just by pulling the stage over and I'm gonna pull out these particular conditions and I'm gonna pull out this variable incrementing logic down here. Well, this is actually that logic and this is the say block that says the number. All right, so let's take a if then else. I'm gonna bring this over here and now we need to think about the logic. We wanna start from the narrowest case and the narrowest case is actually when a number is divisible without remainder by both three and five. So let's start with that one. That's this particular case right here. So that'll be the first one. And if that happens, then we want to say fizzbuzz. If that doesn't happen, let's go to our next case. And our next case is going to be if it's divisible without remainder by either three or five, it doesn't matter. So we'll do five, then we're gonna say buzz. And if it's re divisible without remainder by three, then we're gonna say fizz. And now if none of those tests apply, this is when we wanna say the number itself. So if all those tests turned out to be false, then the last thing we do is say, well, then in that case, the else is going to be, say the number itself. And then we need to put in this particular bit of logic to increment the variable each time, and we can try it again. I'll throw these off the stage so we don't confuse ourselves here, or the scripting area, I should say. There we go. And drum roll, please. And click. One, two, fizz. Four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, 11, fizz, 14, fizz, buzz. I missed one. Oh, too much dramatic emphasis. It works. Anyway, hooray for Alonzo. And hooray for you, since you can now pass that programming test. The larger lesson here is that the order of blocks and the order of those conditions makes a difference. If you want to model complex conditions, you need to pay careful attention to the flow of the logic. 
Don't worry if you get it wrong. We all make those kind of mistakes. If you find that your logic has gone awry, try walking through the branches and see what cases you've neglected to cover. As a final note, do you notice that our variable winds up reading 16 at the end? That's okay because we're not planning to use it for anything else. But it's still a little untidy to leave the variable sitting around. Next time, we're going to learn how to use a for loop to eliminate the need for a separate count variable. But that's definitely enough for today. Congratulations on doing FizzBuzz. You're well on your way, and I'll see you in our next video. Thank <laughs> you.